secular governance to be able to bring Sunnis and Shias together, actually, to make Iraq great again. That was the, <laughs> that was the idea, is that I wanted to bring people, because uh, I think within secular governance we can have able to bring people from multiple sects and multiple religions all together under one umbrella. So, and what I have noticed, um, the most important thing that I've noticed over there is that how the Islamic parties, like Da'wah and the Brotherhood and, and so on, are very organized. So they, they already had the, the, the establishment for saying what they, their ideas. They had the mosque in almost in every district in which they're able to preach and able to get people who are the secularists were having conferences that cost $500 that nobody attends. And um, so, and after I left Iraq, so I started getting death threats left or right, and I, I'm really proud of myself that I'm able to unite Sunnis and Shias together because both of them sent me death threats. And I wrote an article before I left Iraq calling myself the uniter of Iraq because I was being able to hate from both sides, which is something that nobody was able to achieve. Um, so, and I moved to, um, I went to Syria, I lived in Lebanon for a while, and I lived in Malaysia. So I've been all over pretty much the Muslim world from the moderates to the extreme. And it's, it's the trend of all of these places. If you look at for example, after the Arab Spring in, in Egypt, uh, the, the, the most organized group was also the Muslim Brotherhood and they were able to win elections. In Palestine, there was Hamas that won the elections. And so it seems to me that the Arab world and the Muslim world is generally like having two sides. We have the, either the fascist dictators, like used to be Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad and, and Sisi and so on, or we have the, the other sides who are the Islamists, like the Brotherhood or Dawah Party and so on. So what I really want to focus on is to be able to create the third party, the ones who are actually secular liberals who can bring these, all of these sectarian violence hopefully to an end or maybe reduce it by a huge amount because as you can see, the country that I come from, Iraq, is one third is occupied by ISIS and the same thing happening with Syria and we're already seeing the effects. And but the good effects of that, and I don't want to say something positive about ISIS, but, but one of the only things positive about ISIS, uh, don't quote me on that, um, <laughs> is that how many young people, especially in the, I mean, I don't speak other, li other Muslim language, so I speak Arabic, which is, I think is the most important one, um, is that how many Arab, young Arabs are bec becoming so disillusioned with the values of Sharia and the values of, of Islam? Because since we, we start getting like, the education from age, uh, from childhood until somebody graduates from high school and then go to college, they're always indoctrinated that we used to be the greatest, we used to be the best, and Islam is the solution. And, and so the, the indoctrination of Islamism already happens from a very young age that produces this kind of mindset. But as a result of ISIS, and I'm not all ISIS, Al-Qaeda, I'm old school, I used to live with Al-Qaeda when they used to be the big thing, now ISIS came in. So like Al-Qaeda looked like the moderates by comparison. Like I miss the old days in which Al-Qaeda was the biggest deal. Um, so back, back at, uh, and, and with, uh, so the, all, all these groups are to some extent making many young Arabs very disillusioned with the values of Sharia. I mean, when I left Iraq, um, I left Iraq in 2009, and there was a page called Secular Iraqis. I don't know if you're familiar with it. But Secular Iraqis used to be a very unpopular page, only like a few posts here and there and so on. Now the page has hundreds of thousands of followers. You, you look at, there's a, another uh, Facebook page called, and uh, I believe in science, and and it has, which is about like scientific inquiry and, and free thought and so on and it has more than a million followers on social media. And, and the fact that these, these voices are now coming up as a result of the disillusion by ISIS is something I think we should capitalize on to make it that third party. So the organization that he mentioned, movements.org, and what I'm trying to create with the Global Secular Human Movement and also the Secular Caliphate, um, is that I would like to support to create that movement, the third party, in which we can change things from there. I think secularism itself is the best counter-narrative to extremism. So, if, uh, so the, the end of the, of, the, of the title says, how can we help? So within the organization I work for, called movements.org, so we created something like a match.com for human rights, in which uh, activists from close society, mostly secularists and liberals, 
um, because I'm the recruiter, so I try to make sure they're the good guys. Um, uh, make requests asking for help, whether it's uh, media help or uh, technology or all, all this kinds of stuff. And there's a person from the other side who has the skills to help them. So because the, and, and the reason why this is, I think, very necessary, because if you look, I mean, if you look at countries around the Middle East, it seems to me that it's easier to start a terrorist group than to start a liberal group. If you, if you, look, at, if you look at Iraq, for example, look at Syria, if I, if I establish a Sunni party or a Shia party, and I would immediately get millions of dollars of from Saudi Arabia, from Qatar, from Iran. But if I am trying to establish a secular party, I would be living on Uber driver. Like I wouldn't have even money to fund myself. So if you look at the balance that is now in the in the region, you will see that the Islamists have so much funding, while the secularists are being uh, left left behind. And I think that. All of us, especially who come from Muslim backgrounds, and, and so those of us who actually have the privilege right now to live in the West, I think we have a moral duty to stand with, with the liberals of the East and the secular liberals in the Arab world, and, and also to persuade the legislators over here in the United States, in case you are US citizens or, or Canadian, in case of Ali, um, is that we try to convince the, the, the ruling parties here in the United States, whether it's Democrats and Republicans, to be on that side. Because, because if you look at the uh, counter-violent extremism project, like that's being launched by the White House and, and, and so on, you, you look at many of the people who, who are part of this counter-extremism project, many of them are either Muslim apologists or Islamists themselves. And I literally do not believe that we can stop uh, gays from being thrown from the 12th floor by supporting people who believe gays should be thrown from the 10th floor. I really don't believe that's the solution. Uh, so I do believe that we need to stand up and support the, the secular counter narrative that already exists in the, in the region. It's not like we are tr the America is trying to impose its values by sub, by uh, by like supporting these people or creating these people because these people already exist. I mean, if you look at Iraq, we have Ayat Alawi, Ayat Jamal al um and uh, Mithal Alusi. Like there are already established figures of secular thought or at least secular governess. But what they like the most is support. So I would like you to invite you to join me. Yes, I, I mean, um, uh, sorry? Repeat the question. I saw everyone here. Uh, he said that, uh, do you think that the secular governance option is sustainable in the region compared that the other people are, mus like Muslims would be called? Um, I, I believe so. I think, it's, I think it's difficult, but it's doable. Is that, as I said, that many people, like for example, as, as I mentioned, like in Iraq, Many people are sick and tired of the Muslim parties. Like the situation did not improve. Electricity is the same, uh, same situation. You only have electricity for four hours, and all of the services are terrible. Um, so people are already there is like if you look at the general population, they're already sick and tired of the of the ruling parties, and they have seen the effects of the ruling party. So they're no longer disillusioned about the the idea of. Uh, but it is very difficult because the other side is obviously more violent. So, uh, and they are not really re ready to give up power so easily. I mean, the concept of sharing of power is almost non-existent. And if you look at all of the history of Iraq since this establishment, the modern Iraq at least, all of the kings were killed by other people who came afterwards. So, that, so many people, that's why they need extra support. And, and, and one of the supports is obviously military support and, and, uh, and, and technological funding, in my opinion, because you are, we are, are siding with, you are fighting with against people who obviously would would kill you for being a secular. So obviously, I do believe that there is more need to defend these people. I mean, the case of Bengali bloggers that we work together on. Uh, I wish they had extra protection. I mean, I, I mean, there. I mean, Ayan Hirsa Ali over here in the United States has bodyguards, and secular Bengalis walk around without bodyguards in like fucking Dhaka. Uh, 
so it, I think it's it's a very unfair comparison. Many of them don't even have enough money or don't even have uh, like um, um, like a good life to be able that can they can spread their ideas. Okay, I think I think that's the last. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the big thing is fiscal security. Do you think there's you know, how far do we have to go in terms of having a scalable solution for fiscal security for certain people on high end this scale, you know, to come out, especially from this but well, is there a way to work with say retired, you know, veterans or people with seasoned backgrounds that want to help and want to do something meaningful? And then privately fund us in a way that can provide real time security to these people in a way that's sustainable. Do you think we're really lagging behind on that or Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean I mean as I told you, like the 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 I mean, if you, if you just look at the recent cases of the Bengali bloggers, like these, I mean, in my opinion, like these folks, like them, are the people who deserve the support the most. Because first of all, they're making the change from within. They are speaking the language of the average pe of the people over there, um, and they are the people like that who are who are mostly left out. So I mean, when it comes to Obvious security logistics. I think there are some difficulties here because, like, some companies may not security companies may not be allowed to operate in these countries. Um, so, I mean, ideally, you would have security from there, and they would. But I, I think that the biggest issue is mostly funding. Is that I mean, security companies are already there, mostly are mercenaries, so you don't, they don't need to care about ideology that much. So, um, so uh, but but they lack a lot of funding. I mean, I mean, by comparison to all the other groups compared like compared to Dawa party brotherhood uh, and obviously brotherhood have much st strength in numbers so they have so many people which kind of gives them strength but the by by they the secularists and the liberals are the people who like support the most and 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 uh, if we if if the if the west or any rich arab businessman would like to donate millions to help these these causes i think that's what the solution is thank you very much